Chapter 14. The First Day. Hello, Alex. How are you? Me? I'm feeling fine. In fact, I'm feeling super fine. I've never felt better. And yes, I am still in the hospital, but guess what? I'm going home tomorrow. Just a sec, we'll have a bop. Not by her, that's what Mum calls strutting my funky stuff. That's an oldie saying. I call it getting down with my bad self. And look, I danced around for ages. I'm not even out of breath. So this is what it's like to be healthy. I'd almost forgotten. It's so great to be fit. I feel as if I could run a marathon without even pausing to catch my breath. I've already packed my bags. It's been six weeks since my operation and I'm finally going home. It was beginning to feel as if Dr. Bryce was never going to let me go. But today is the first day of the rest of my life. The operation was a complete and utter success. Not only am I still standing, but I'm running, jumping, dancing, you name it, I can do it. At last, everything seems to be coming together. Mum and Dad are getting on much better now. Mum's getting a bit of a tummy bulge now, so I can see you growing. It's amazing. Mum says when she has her next scan, I can go with her, so I can see what you look like inside her. Next time, both Dad and I are going to go with her. I can't wait. Do you know how I feel now? Peaceful. I don't have a thing in the world to worry about. I really feel like I could live forever. Dr Bryce called his press conference. Mum and Dad wouldn't let me watch it on the telly. They said some of the reports were bound to come up with really stupid... Reporters were bound to come up with really stupid questions and comments and they didn't want me to get upset. They watched it though. When I asked them how it went, all they said was, OK. I do wish they wouldn't treat me like a baby or, or worse still a cretin. Michelle, Pete and all the other nurses wouldn't tell me what happened at the press conference either. I meant to attend a press conference this Saturday with Mum and Dad. Mum reckons that, one, that once that's over... We'll have the media off our backs. I'm still taking my anti-rejection medication. I have one injection a day. Dr Bryce says I'll have to keep giving myself these injections for the foreseeable future. The injections sting a bit, but I don't mind. It was a bit daunting at first to have to stab myself with a needle, but now I'm used to it. Diabetics have to do this sort of thing every day, so it's not as if I'm alone. I probably won't be making quite so many of these recordings now. There's no point, is there? I'll be here when you arrive. I'll carry on until you're born, though. I'll tell you things as they occur to me and as I live through them. It'll be a video diary from me to you. Funnily enough, I eat much more healthily now than I did before the operation. I want to look after my new heart. I eat more salads and vegetables and fruit and I don't eat red meat anymore, just fish and poultry. No particular reason. It's just healthier, that's all. I've decided to live until I'm 102. That's my lucky number, 102. I'm looking forward to getting home and seeing most of my friends again. I haven't spoken to Marlon since I read the article in the Daily Press. I know it was Marlon who told. No one else knew. More than once I picked up the phone to call him and ask him why. But then, why should I? He should make the first move, not me. I know he can't phone me or come to see me because he doesn't know where I am. But let's just see what happens when I get home. He let me down. I might forgive him, but I won't forget. Mum says Marlon's family got paid a load of money for the world exclusive they gave to that tabloid. Well, I hope Marlon enjoys the money. I trusted him. It'll be a long time before I do that again.